talking about a rivalry game, a game that is much needed for the Hokies. And by the way, the who say they need it too. You know what? This is one of those rivalry games. It's not below the surface. It's right in your grill all day long. So we are set to go. Virginia at 17 and 3. Virginia Tech 13 and 9. DA Clark to run that one down and we are underway. And already they are in full throat here at the castle. Beekman gives it up. Vanderplas outside. Shot clock inside 10. Down to five. Over the top. And knocked away. And a clean theft there by Padula. Nearly gave it right back. And a strong defensive stand for the Hokies on the first possession of the game. The defense let them down in Miami on Tuesday night. Mike Young looking to get his team to return back to their defensive favor. Underneath, tough drive, but Collins cannot finish it. The freshman out of Clover, South Carolina. Clark thought about lining up a long one on the baseline. Long one, Franklin, but he kind of airmailed that one. And he will hear about it from the castle guard. When you think about this rivalry, the Hokie faithful don't get up for anything more so than they do this game. Hokies 31 and 24 against Virginia here in Blacksburg. In fact, they've won the last two that have been played in this building between the two, and Mutz gets them on the board. And that's one of the areas of concern for Tony Bennett and his defense. Points in the paint. They gave up 36 points in the paint to Syracuse on Monday, and that's something Virginia Tech is absolutely going to try to exploit. Cavaliers leading the ACC in defense, also in three-point shooting. Gardner with a miss. And also assists per game. The most unselfish team in the conference coming into this Saturday. Padula very dangerous beyond the three-point line when he gets it rolling. But the person that knows that most is Kihei Clark. Is Hunter Couture lines up a three, unable to knock it down. Hunter Couture's been shooting a hot basketball. But Kihei Clark took the matchup against Sean Padula personally the first time these two teams got together on January 18th. And from the start of this one, it looks like it could be the same. Yeah, held up to 10 points. Padula had an off night in that one for sure because of Clark. And not only that, Kia Clark with 20 points on the offensive end of that game as well. Gardner with a shot that catches a lot of iron but drops down. Nice friendly rim. Yeah, one of the better mid-range shooters you're going to find in the ACC. Jaden Gardner is automatic when he catches the basketball 18 feet and in. Hokies have one win over a top 25 this season. They beat then number 18 North Carolina back in December. Of course, it's Carolina and Duke later on at 6.30 on ESPN. Bazzilli way downtown. Don't you think he's going to be a big key today? That is the matchup. When Virginia Tech has had success versus Virginia, especially in this building, a lot of it has been based upon a stretch big. Kevin Aluma got the best of Virginia back-to-back -back years in this matchup. Clark with a triple and a feathery touch. He's hitting 40%. And that's where Kia Clark is going to have to be more aggressive in this game offensively. We talked about 20 points in the first matchup. Between these two, he can find his buckets against Virginia Tech. These are both teams that can get roaring from three-point line. Padula, and we'll finish that one on a little reverse. And that's a nice wrinkle for Mike Young in comparison to having Sean Padula having to deal with the pressure of Kihe Clark, 94 feet. He's allowing him to be more of an off-the-ball guy and gets an easy bucket because of it. Gardner wants to get inside that lane. little fall away and blocked by Bazzilli. You see Justin Mutz handling the basketball, being a playmaker, and taking the pressure off of Sean Padula, Padula having to deal with Kihe Clark. Off the of fake Collins, a one-hander. Rebounded away by Virginia. Cavaliers got as high as number two in the poll. Right now, number six. Don't be surprised, certainly, if they pick this one off today, if they keep on surging in the poll. Vanderplas way downtown himself off the back of the iron. Game one in Charlottesville going to Virginia 78-68. Good basketball game two weeks ago.
Couture giving it up. Darius Maddox is not in the lineup, not with the team. Once again, this is third straight game he's missing because of family concerns as Padula drills that one. And that time, Jane Gardner not there to help. So Kihei Clark gets hit by the screen, and Sean Padula gets probably the easiest look he will ever get in this series. Turn around, Franklin. No. Armand Franklin's been playing great basketball as of late, so because of that, he draws the matchup. Hunter Couture, who defends the best perimeter player, normally for the opposing team, guarding Franklin as Padula's off the mark on the second three-point attempt. And he's been just a little bit less good from three-point land, 33% for the year. They'd like that to be more like 39. And he'll take a lot of threes downstairs and a quick finish there by Gardner. And the nice find from Vanderplas to Gardner on the back screen and the cut. Gardner wanting a foul on that possession, but regardless, still finishes off the bucket. Okie's coming off a loss against number 23 Miami this week. And Virginia Tech trying to get back in the win column. Remember that, that seven game losing skid. At the time they lost Couture for a bunch of time. Shot clock. And a violation. Never did get to the rim. If Virginia Tech is going to be. Because Virginia at this point is winning this year's Clash 5 to the Hokies 1.5. This game is worth a half a point. You can see the trophy that's on the line there. I'm just trying to figure out how we get the bacon costume there that can be something that you can use down the line for Halloween Corey I know you're a big part of this rivalry as well when you were an athlete so just this atmosphere and everything on the line you didn't get the bacon but a win is still savory I'm sure the win is the most important thing but a very very close second is bacon everyone loves bacon right can't find the ball right now <laughs> that would be a very cruel prank yeah. Played by someone to actually take the game ball. They normally have two, so this must be the backup basketball that was over at the scores table. McNeely into the contest now for Tony Bennett. For Clark. Also Ryan Dunn, the 6'8 freshman, can really make an impact defensively. On the spin, Beekman denied, and a foul on the play. That was with five on the shot clock. Give you a look at Mike Young, fourth year at the helm for the Hokies. This team's do a very good job taking care of the ball. Both of these teams do an excellent job there, only averaging about ten and a half turnovers a game. That's in the top 20. Yeah, and the Virginia, of course, nine and a half a game, which leads the ACC, one of the best ball handling teams in the country. Actually lead the country in assist to turnover ratio and Virginia Tech a top 20 team as well. So a lot of very good guard play between these two squads. Padula with the foul and a one point game early. Okie's involved in a ton of close games. Six of their eight ACC losses have been decided in single digits. And this is always interesting to see how teams will prepare for the trap. Beekman popped it right to Couture. Shot clock. Going to be a big factor all day, I think. Both sides. Bazzilli is going to launch. Comes right to Mutzen. He'll clean it up. Justin Mutz in his sixth year being physical with the first year. Ryan Dunn winning the offensive rebound battle and the second chance points on that possession. Averaging a degree every couple of years. <laughs> He's got three of them right now. And yes, he is toying with the idea of a doctorate. But wants to continue to play basketball professionally as Hunter Couture attacks, unable to finish, met by Ryan Dunn at the rim. But Justin Mutz is holding off on the doctorate, wants to hoop for a little while before he makes that happen. Can't blame him, averaging 13 and 7. Kihei Clark, long one. Off the front iron. And just a small thing, but Kihei Clark had the shot when he first came off the screen on that one, OB. If he's going to take that one, that would have been a shot in rhythm in comparison to sitting and watching, but it does not change his defensive intensity on Sean Padula. 
which Padula knows all too well from the first encounter. Backdoor cut in the paint, takes a hit. It'll be Padula going to the line. Hokies moving it very nicely there. 11.47 to go here in the first half. And Virginia Tech with a three-point advantage in a rivalry game. For legal reasons, we can't Saga when you consider teams that can really, especially playing at St. Mary's. So that'll be an interesting one tonight, similar to the one we have here. Another rivalry game where regardless of the records, regardless of the rankings, it's always going to be a big-time competition when these two teams get together. The Duke and Carolina both unranked. 11.47 to go here in the first half. Padula outstanding at the line, 86%. Coming off 20 points in the Miami loss. You look at Sean Padula, one of the reasons why he's the front runner for ACC most improved player. Up 10 plus points per game this year. The only member of the Hokies, the only member of this actual game between both these teams in the top 15 in scoring in the ACC this season. Confidence start so far for the Hokies. It has been that. And again, on their home floor, Virginia Tech is a problem in this building. You knew it's going to be difficult for Virginia to come in here and get a win. And that's the thing for it. When you're playing, a, when you're a great team, you've got to come in and win in environments like this. But Virginia Tech needs this win to try to keep the NCAA tournament chances alive as an at-large team. Dunn nearly pried that one free. Lynn Kidd at 6'10 into the contest now. For the Hokies, he'll drop that one down. Sweet shot. Well, he makes 66 percent. Absolutely, and now perfect five for five in his last three games. So he's pretty sure-handed. When you get the basketball in his hands, he's going to take care of business. Virginia, just a great passing team, and as you pointed out, really well. They're great when that shot clock is down, like inside five seconds. They're so comfortable in that position. They're poised, and they follow really the leadership of their coach. That's who Tony Bennett is as a person and how he was as a basketball player. And that poise, they're always under control. Mutz trying to take it a little closer to the goal. Not there for him. Down with a rebound. And Virginia has numbers right now. Will they look to exploit it? Isaac McNeely, who has the green light. Oh, strong to the cup. Hanging on the iron. They're going to wave that off. No basket. Ted Valentine came sprinting off the baseline and waved it off. Even though the bucket doesn't count, if I'm Isaac McNeely, I count it as a highlight. <laughs> but Ted Valentine right on point. Because McNeely hangs around on the rim and you see the ball possibly coming off, spends a little extra time, that's going to be offensive goaltending on McNeely, so the bucket will not count. The highlight still made it. So when the freshman cuts the highlight, it ends right there without oh, any call from Ted Valentine. Absolutely. Valentine's. You just catch him hanging around on the rim. That's all. But the proper call, the tour off to Mutz. Trying to get it downstairs, nearly deflected, but another two by Lynn Kidd. He's making a difference right away to transfer from Clemson. He absolutely is. And when he comes off the bench, Mike Young makes sure he gets the basketball in his hands, and he's making his coach look like a genius back-to-back -back buckets. Beekman on the feed, and that is going to be a blocking foul. Crowd howling there as Couture went down, but a block on him. And a great matchup between these two seniors, you think. Hunter Couture, Armand Franklin, both fourth-year seniors. And you can see Couture moving to his left, both feet not on the floor. That is the correct call by Justin Porterfield to put the block on Hunter Couture on that possession. So Franklin to the line where he makes 74 percent. One of the five starters Tony Bennett returned from last year's team. And this is the biggest lead for the Hokies today. And you look at Armand Franklin over his last 10 games. Struggled against Houston, struggled at Miami, went home for the holiday break and he has been a different player since coming back over 16 points per game and he has really been the guy that Virginia has followed on the offensive end of the floor over that stretch he could light it up at 26 against Baylor Butts the senior on the spin way short 
Justin Butts looking for the double team. That's one of the things. Virginia keeps you off balance, whether they're going to double team or they're going to play you straight up. That time, Butts trying to be aggressive, but Ben, ben Vanderplas standing his ground. Franklin with a catch. He'll fire. Got it with a triple. And, and now Amar Franklin continues to stay aggressive. This has been really the maturity of him. Even though he hasn't made shots early in this game, he continues to stay aggressive when things aren't going well. 40% from three-point land. Padula. Shot clock to 10. He'll launch a three. He can do that all day when he gets rolling. But you see the difference in comfort level that Sean Padula has on this floor? You did the game in Charlottesville. You saw how uncomfortable Kia Clark made him, but he has been very comfortable here in the castle. Clark trying to shed everybody, but picked off. Cannon with a bounce to Padula, back to Mott. He'll lay it in. Perfectly run break there by the Hokies. On top, 23-15. Vanderplas, no, Kidd with another rebound. Padula jumping inside, back out for Mutz. Padula again, short. Clark feeding up ahead, nice quickly run break. And laid up and in by McNeely. And just thrown off on defensive balance. The point guard, Sean Padula, taking the long three. No one else for Virginia Tech getting back defensively, allowing McNeely to have the easy bucket. McNeely out of West Virginia. Inside Collins and tied up. Possession arrow will keep it on this end of the floor when we come back. Seven and a half to go in the half. Virginia Tech turning defense into offense off the turnover. As my guy, the notorious D.O.B. mentioned, they perfectly run fast break. Hurry to Cole's February clearance event for safety. Celebrities here, the Hall of Famer, the great Chipper Jones, 2018 inductee in status. <laughs> Angel pointing him out. Great to see him here. Apparently a Hoops fan. Absolutely. One of the best third basemen to ever play the game. Multiple World Series championships. And of course, you know, one of the guys growing up, we're about the same age, so watching him develop into a pro has uh, been special to see him and get, have the opportunity to say hello to him pregame and meet Chipper. Great Always player, respect Chip. his work. As Matt Bartley, our producer, who is a vaunted Mets fan, will tell you, he ate them alive. <laughs> Even named one of his kids Shay. After Shea Stadium, all the damage he did in there. Mutz backdoor cut. Boy, they run that play perfectly. Collins with the slam. They have Virginia Tech has been a great cutting team throughout this first half. And they know about Virginia's basketball ball pressure between Reese Beekman and Kia Clark. But they have found a number of angles. Now another turnover. Mutz. Oh, the pass does get to Collins. And he'll draw the foul. I mean, it barely got there. On a long bomb by Mutz after the theft. 7 0 1 to go in the half. Justin Mutz just showing off his passing ability on a number of possessions. The long pass on the last transition play, and now in the half court, the backdoor find. Armand Franklin caught ball watching, and MJ Collins with the new hairdo cutting backdoor for the finish. Freshman had a nice effort against Syracuse a couple of games ago with 11 points. As he is getting the start these days, we mentioned that Darius Maddox is out, the junior, the sharpshooter, because of a family matter. He's missed the last three games. That's opening up opportunities for people like John Camden, six-day freshman. Has done just that, and you know, Darius Maddox actually led Virginia Tech in scoring in the first matchup between these two teams. Had 13 points in that game, so absolutely missing from this Virginia Tech lineup today. Hokies with their biggest lead so far. Franklin with a catch and a finish and one and that's foul gonna, too. That's going to be the second foul on Hunter Couture. That's a big play in a number of different ways. One, you get Franklin a bucket off a nice backdoor feed. And Vanderplas has done a great job finding his teammates throughout this game. Virginia cutting very well also as Amon Franklin unable to complete the three-point play. 
But the damage is done. Two fouls now on Hunter Couture, 643 remaining in this first half. Be interesting to see how Mike Young plays this out. Couture coming back very well from that injured elbow, but in trouble right now. Franklin will attack. He tried to finish, but can't. He did not get the dunk. Man, did the students love that. Padula, strong move there. Batted away right to Vanderplas. A very fast moving first half here in Blacksburg. It has been that. Very few fouls and a lot of action. Clark nearly gave it up. Outside the three. Vanderplas will launch. That clangs away. Virginia only two for seven from beyond the three point arc. Lead the ACC in three point field goal percentage at 38.5 as Justin Mutz turns it over. A little yeah. too much on that pass. Backdoor closed there. Virginia holding opponents to 60 points a game. That does lead the ACC. Tiptoeing inside. No finish there. Beekman couldn't get it to go. They battled for that. And it'll go the other way. Virginia and Virginia Tech and later on our Saturday showcase number one Purdue is in Bloomington to take on number 21 Indiana and then North Carolina Duke squaring off at Cameron Indoor. That's with Dan Jay and Holly on the call later on tonight at 630. Two great rivalry games coming up. I tell you what Purdue is the best team I've seen live this season. But they are walking into a buzzsaw going into Assembly Hall in Bloomington, Indiana. It is going to be crazy in there today. One of my absolute favorite places to call it a game. Do you wear the pinstripe red and white pants I when you do the game? I don't do that. No, I don't. <laughs> uh, nice effort there to try and save it by Bazzilli. Couldn't do it. Here's Clark wide open for three. And the follow is up and in by Gardner. A nice finish by Jaden Gardner, who's led Virginia in scoring the last two games, averaging 17 and a half points per game over the last two, starting to become much more aggressive on the offensive end than he has been early in the season. Bazzilli handing off for Couture. Bazzilli can hit that three as well. Once again, the back door. They'll swing it. Mutz. Bazzilli. Shot clock down to six. Padula. Harass there and they turn it over and that is a individual classic great defensive sequence by Reese Beekman now Virginia as a team defensively did the job but Reese Beekman covered so much ground on that one possession alone guarding Hunter Couture early and then also the closeout taking away the three from Grant Bazzilli and not allowing him to make the extra pass that's one that Reese Beekman can take and cut and put on his defensive player of the year tape when he possibly wins it this season. Well, they got it down to four on the shot clock and then turned them over. Impressive. Coming up on four minutes to go in the half in Blacksburg. Kihei Clark jumping in the paint, knocks it down. Once again, this is a game where Kihei Clark is going to have to be aggressive. 20 points versus Virginia Tech in their first matchup. And he has to be a scorer as well as a facilitator throughout this one. And look out here come the Cavaliers six nothing run over the last three minutes. Mutz against Vanderplas knocks that one down off the window. And that Justin Mutz falls into the same category as Kihei Clark. Oftentimes they can be more aggressive as offensive players looking for their own. They're normally going to sp spread the basketball around five assists already for Mutz in this game. But oftentimes they have to call their own number. 6'7 senior, a superb passer. Beekman in traffic and catches the iron and drops in. Speaking of calling your own number, Reese Beekman with a nice take on that one and a soft touch on the rim. He has six. Three point game. I think we're going to be saying that all day. I, I do believe that could be the case. I think we could see a nip and tuck affair in this one, OB. Padula to the lane, got it back, found the iron, and laid it in. Knew exactly where he was. And Padula. Fortunate to be able to recover that when Reese Beekman got his hands on the basketball. But as you mentioned, Sean Padula knowing exactly where he was when he recovers to be able to lay it up. Already has 12 points. 
Beekman finds Gardner on the spin. McNeely will launch a long one and drain it up the butt net by Isaac McNeely, 43% outside the three. And McNeely writing from West Virginia, so I'm sure he's got a few family members making the trip to Blacksburg to come check this one out. Padula thought about it. Penetration, yes, all the way to the cup. Points in the paint in favor of the Hokies. They have won that battle thus far as Sean Padula has won the battle. 14 points already for him in this first half. Only 10 in the first game. Bouncing for Beekman, no. So 141 to go in the first half. The Hokies on top 32 28 over number six Virginia. Here's Collins that clanged away. Virginia Tech three for ten beyond the three. Same as Virginia. There's Gardner and Gardner's shot won't go. Butts with the board. Gardner got away with a little bit of a chicken wing right there. If he'd have made that shot, I'm sure the people here would have gone crazy. Hokies would have been howling on that one. Howling Hokies, huh? Okay. <laughs> Butts pops one up there, but shy. Not something you see often from Justin Muss. He definitely doesn't look for his three-point shot off the move as often. But a two-for-one possession right there. Virginia Tech should get it back here to end the half. Beekman trying to penetrate. Gardner turns around, left it well short. Comes right back to him, though, to the baseline. Leaning in and a blocking foul. 31.2 to go in the half. We're going to take a break here. Tight one in Blacksburg, 32-28 the Hokies. Self comfortable here at home and he's done it off the basketball not facing as much pressure from Kia Clark because he's done the job on the move his teammates have helped him become a more efficient scorer in this game and he's done just that not only from beyond the three-point arc but also attacking the basket five for eight from the field two for four from beyond the three-point arc 14 points two assists already for Sean Padula as you've mentioned a very different game for him so far than when they met in Charlottesville 32 28 Virginia Tech that led throughout the first half and the lead has been as high as nine and OB Sean Padula told Angel and I that he was gassed during that game Kihei Clark pressured him 94 feet he also played all 40 minutes in the game in Charlottesville Mike Young has gotten him a couple minutes of a blow here in this first half he's going to be important throughout the remainder of this game but he's playing a completely different basketball game than the one he did in Charlottesville a vitally important for the Hokies if they're going to make a run at an NCAA tournament bid remember they had that scintillating romp through the ACC tournament to win that tournament and get the automatic bid last year they do not want to be in that same position Yeah, you see just a simple thing right here the mix up just put the ball in the hands of Justin Mutz a luxury to have a guy like that to take the pressure away from Sean Padula allow him to continue to be a playmaker here down the stretch about a second and a half difference game clock and shot clock shot is down to six. Padula, Bazzilli, got to get a shot in the air. Spins, fires off the iron, and that is how the first half will come to an end. With the Hokies on top, 32 to 30, trying to snap a seven-game winning streak of rival Virginia. And Padula was certainly the star for the Hokies in the first 20 minutes for head coach. Mike Young winding up with those 46 0 run, but now it just comes down to guarding the individuals. He said, Right now, Virginia Tech is just tricky. We have to make sure that we're guarding their secondary plays, guarding the back door, and not too pleased with how many points that they have in the paint. The 20 points in the paint is something that he does not like from a team at this point. Got to get a shot up here, just 2.4 on the shot clock. As Clark gets it inbound, Franklin launching, and it's around and out. You know, Angel mentioned the tricky plays. Mike Young made it clear that he had a couple of wrinkles he was going to throw into the mix 
just for Virginia in this game because he respects how great they are defensively with their principles. So he had a couple of things that they would look at, and they've been successful in the first half. See if they can continue it in the second. Cavaliers, by the way, have missed their last five, but they get the turnover. And Clark will lead the attack here for Virginia. Gardner thought about it. Beekman can really stick that threes, 45%. Franklin straight on. And they're going to let that roll out back over to the Hokies it goes. Before Amon Franklin, keep going. The thing for him has been, even if he's not making shots, he's got to continue to stay aggressive shooting the basketball because Virginia needs his offense. His 2.3, three-point field goals a game helps them on the offensive end of the floor. So they, oh, he found himself a lane and slammed it down. With some authority. With so much attention being paid to the action and moving off the ball for Virginia Tech, Virginia forgot to guard the guy with the basketball who was the most dangerous guy on the floor. Clark, tough pass on the baseline. He makes a lot of tough passes. Is Gardner. He got a big time open look. Tap back out to Clark. Second effort. He'll lay that one up and in. It is a quick first step by Kia Clark, recognizing it would be difficult for MJ Collins to stay in front of him. Kia seeing no help behind him, taking advantage of his opportunity. He has seven. Back to a two point game. Silly has it poked away, but that's a reach in foul as well. That will go against Kia Clark. Everyone for Virginia guarding. Their guy, and there's no help on that end. And of course, T.A. Clark seeing no help behind MJ Collins. He knows he can win the individual matchup and get to the rim. First foul of the second half. There were only six fouls in the entire first half. Yeah, the first half flew by, but these two teams don't foul a lot. Virginia Tech only took two free throws in the first matchup in Charlottesville. So I believe Mike Young is happy to see his team going to the line a little more often. But this much beating his man. One of the foul, too, but right around Vanderplas there. But Obi, no trap. Because you have to respect just as much as a passer, Tony Bennett not sending the double team. 10 points, five assists from Mutz. Here's Clark on the move. Kept that foot down. The spin by Gardner. Denied. Bazzilli, tough D. Comes right back to Virginia. Clark thought about a quick shot. Goes into the lane. And an offensive foul. Gardner not happy with that at all, but a charge. Well, when that left arm comes out, that's where you're going to get the foul. You watch the left arm of Jaden Gardner, and because of that left arm being exposed to the official, that's where that call was made. So the Hokies by four and the ball, just getting underway here in the second half. It's putting it mildly to say the Hokies are in desperate need of a big win. They have to have this win. Time is running out on the Hokies. In order to keep their NCAA tournament chances alive for an at-large bid, if they don't win the ACC tournament, they have to have this one. Bazzilli finding the open left side, the cut, and the stuff. Boy, that's the second resounding dunk here in the second half for the Hokies. But it comes off of great cutting. Virginia Tech has been slicing Virginia up on that end of the floor with their cutting. Clark right by his defender up and in again. And Tony Bennett for the time on 16-22 to go here in the second half. Tony Bennett not happy with the way Virginia Tech is moving the basketball against his defense. Grant Bazzilli finding the cutting Justin Mutz who finishes with authority. Need money? When every buck. Here in college basketball's greatest rivalry, there is nothing better than Duke and Carolina. But it's as crazy as ever. You just have to sit back and enjoy this. North Carolina, Duke. Tonight at 6 30 on ESPN. Okies by four in the Cavaliers. And what a women's basketball triple header we have for you. Number 11, North Carolina, squaring off tomorrow against Louisville. That's our first game at noon Eastern. Then undefeated number three LSU battling Texas A&M. We cap the afternoon with a Big Ten matchup between number 10 Ohio State and number eight Maryland all coming your way 
on Sunday. By the way, a tip of the cap to Mike Burnoff, who for 40 years has been the radio color guy, football and basketball for Virginia Tech. 40 years, Mike is still at it, not retiring. I think he wants to make it to 80. Mike and I have a saying, every time I come to do a Virginia Tech game, we always greet each other with, it's got to be a big game if you're here. <laughs> <laughs> He's done a lot of them. He so absolutely has. Can't finish it close. So under 16, Virginia three for their last 11 shooting the basketball, so they need to heat it up. In the lane, Gardner, yes, with the lay-in. Nice find from Reese Beekman on that play. Virginia with two of the top three assist leaders in ACC basketball. Kia Clark leading the ACC in assists. Reese Beekman at number three, and you've got two great passers in the backcourt for the Hoos. Both of these teams can share the sugar, can't they? They absolutely can, but no one can say share the sugar like you, my guy. <laughs> Shot clock down to seven. Mazzilli will give it up on the drive. Couture harassed and knocked away. Great D there by the Cavaliers. Gardner calling for the ball. We'll lay it in. And you think about the last two passes from Reese Beekman and from Kia Clark to tie this basketball game. And if you're playing for Virginia, you're not one of those two guys. You got to make sure you're running at all times because they will find you. Gardner with a dozen along with three rebounds. Couture fighting through the screen and Teddy Valentine whistling a foul with 14 45 remaining here in Blacksburg a 4 0 run for the Hoos off of two beautiful dimes Reese Beekman finding Jade Gardner and Kihei Clark liking that action as Beekman comes up with the block shot Kihei showing some sharing the sugar of his own. It's not like the good old days. It's not like the good old days. Olympics recently joined forces with ESPN and ABC to be a member of the Choose Kindness Alliance, promoting intentional inclusion, sparking kindness for young people and their families. Earlier today, athletes and partners from Virginia Tech's Unified Sports Leadership Team presented a banner from Special Olympics North America to the university for creating an inclusive campus for people with and without intellectual disabilities. And we're tied up at 38. Virginia has not led in this game, but they are on a 6-0 run. And they've been able to do it with a couple of timely stops. Off the switch, Justin Mutz going to the post area. Justin. And finishing. And Reese Beekman is a great a defender as he is. He is outmatched when he has to get switched off with Justin Mutz on the block. Bennett Vanderplas too slow coming down to try to get the basketball out of Mutt's hands. Justin Mutz has been aggressive on the offensive end of the floor here to start the second half. Mutz had a strong day. They really need that from him, the Hokies. They absolutely do. Justin Mutz came back to Virginia Tech in his sixth year of college to say, simply saying that he wanted to win a game in March Madness. Well, they've got to get the March Madness, and in order to do that, they got to get this one. Wait, no whistle there. They're letting them play a little. They absolutely have. It's been a physical game, but not a lot of fouls, but consistent for both sides. Couture leaning in, searching for contact. Can't hit the shot, though. Yeah, Hunter Couture searching for contact on that one. It really distracted him from making the shot. He got a pretty good look. Couture, by the way, 0 for 6 from the field today. He's had back-to-back 20-point -back games for the first time in his career. Shot clock to 7. Here's Franklin. Franklin, nice dish for Gardner. And one. He'll be at the line. Jake Gardner to shoot. Now you've made this point better than anybody about Virginia. The shot clock was inside four seconds. You can't tell. They are so comfortable. They are poised. They are calm. They're cool. They're collected. And they're going to the free throw line with an opportunity to tie this game once again off of the Jaden Gardner finish. 
because they stay poised at the end of the shot clock. Can't do it though. It remains a one point game. Gardner has scored over 2,000 points, has over 1,000 rebounds in his career. Transferred a couple of years ago from East Carolina to Virginia. He has 14. I believe he's the only active player in Division I basketball with 2,000 points and 1,000 rebounds. Big time score. Mutz on the spin. Hands it off. Lots of traffic, but the finish yeah. by Lynn Kidd. Yeah. And Lynn Kidd continues his perfection from the field. Has not missed a shot in his last three games. And continues to be aggressive when he gets his opportunities off the bench. Very rarely does he move away from the cup. He knows exactly where he makes his living. Vanderplas downstairs. Back out for Clark and a three. Can't argue with the look he got. No, great look, and that's one P.A. Clark has to take. Mutz again. With it targeting him a lot in this game. To the paint, slapped away by Vanderplas. Yeah, nice hands by Vanderplas on that one. Mutz exposing the basketball, putting it right into Vanderplas area. Gardner going strong, kind of bullying his way in. Ted Valentine says a travel. So that'll be their sixth turnover. Three point lead for the Hokies. Off the catch. Jaden Gardner picks it up, and that is a great call by Teddy Valentine, who had a great look at him shuffling his feet, the quick steps in between. Not sure if that would have been an offensive or defensive foul, but I love the fact that he caught the travel before the contact occurred. Here's Padula, big first half for him. He had 14. Working on Kihei Clark. On the spin. Yes, and one. Boy, just backed him down, and he made an A-plus move. Sean Padula has learned it is difficult to go past Kihei Clark when you're squaring him up. So he used his body. Sean Padula put on 10 pounds of muscle in the offseason, and he brought it into play on that last possession, taking his game to the box end. Boy, why doesn't it pay off in the rest of his game 10 in the offseason? <laughs> Under 12. I like to keep it at just 10. Gardner again on the entry. Lots of contact. It won't go down for him. Forty six forty Padula no Clark wants to run. He'll slam on the brakes and gives it right back. That's a rare turnover for Kihei Clark not aware of his surroundings. But it's hitting the deck and they will blow the whistle on the block. Forty six to forty. Sean Padula playing big boy basketball going to the block. Up and under Kihei Clark to finish the hoop, the honk. Virginia Tech leading Virginia by six points. Angel Gray with the Hall of Famer, the great Chipper Jones. I'm glad that you said the great Chipper Jones. He is just that, but not just your outstanding performances with the Atlanta Braves. You too, just being an alumni from Virginia Tech. You're going to be speaking to a couple of the people that have been involved in the baseball team at a conference. But when you're taking this experience in, you said, wow, this atmosphere, there's second to none. This is my first experience here in Blacksburg. I've been telling a buddy of mine who was an alumni here at Virginia Tech that I'd come up to and go to a, a football game with him and tailgate and everything. I had no idea it was going to be Virginia, Virginia Tech basketball and me speaking at a, at a baseball banquet tonight. So, but this, this is electric. It's awesome. They're coming off of their first super regional appearance as well when you're looking at the investment, not only in the basketball team, but in the baseball team. What are you seeing in them? Well, I'm seeing uh, progress, you know, I mean, how many times do you, you win conference championships or you win division championships and you get this close to making it to Omaha like Virginia Tech did last year. It's got to, it's got to, you know, give us a lot of motivation to go home and work that little bit extra harder to take that extra step this year. I want to talk and come back to this rivalry a little bit. They call it the Smithfield Commonwealth Clash. When you're able to take down 
Brown, another Virginia team. What's that experience to you? Can you walk us through any experiences you had as a player? No, I played in Richmond, Virginia. That's about it. I didn't go to college, so you know, anytime I get a chance to soak up the college experience, you know, you got Virginia top ten basketball program and Virginia Tech. Obviously, Sean Padula today is not not going to let them lose this ball game. He's playing outstanding. So. While I've always grown up admiring Virginia and their program and whatnot, uh, I don't think they'd let me out of here if I didn't root for the Hokies today. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. They wanted to know what type of basketball player you would be, but we'll let you escape with that. Spot up three-point shooter, 100%. I don't like getting in there with the trees. <laughs> Thanks so much for your time. Congratulations on all your success. Chipper t always took the big swing. You know, <laughs> hit a lot of home runs. a great player. Offensively, defensively, great leader as well for the Atlanta Braves. Just sensational. Yeah, and Chipper, a Florida native, grew up in Florida, and of course, happy to see the Florida native for the Virginia Tech Hokies get his first field goal of the game. Hunter Couture knocking down a big three out of the timeout. And Hunter's done a great job defensively on Armand Franklin throughout this game. Offensively, you mentioned the back to back 20 point games for him. Hasn't had the success on that end of the floor, but Mike Young will take what he's getting from his senior. That man has shown up in a big way today. Justin Mutz with 17. And also dishing the basketball as you always expect. But Justin Mutz can do this on a nightly basis. He was a preseason all ACC pick this year. Oftentimes he's not as aggressive offensively as Mike Young would like for him to be, but he picked the right time to show up for the Hokies. He's coming off just 10 and 3 against Miami. They needed him today. Beekman will draw the foul. And he'll be at the line to shoot two. 51-42 Virginia Tech and our college basketball lineup rolls on all afternoon over on ESPN at 4 o'clock Eastern. Number one Purdue in Bloomington to take on number 21 Indiana. Another great rivalry game in a North Carolina Duke. They square it off at Cameron Indoor. Dan Schumann, Jay Billis, Holly Roll on the call. So now if Beekman misses this one, everybody gets bacon. Oh, not yet. Right into the student section. <laughs> well, and again, one of the better student sections, one of the greatest environments to play in the ACC coming into this building is difficult for opponents, especially when you have to shoot into that in the second half. Knocked around and a scrape. Kid lost it. Here comes Beekman. Vanderplas with a hook high off the window and ripped away by Kid. And Grant Mazzilli hasn't had the offensive impact that we were expecting from him in this game, but he's done a very good job defending ben Vanderplas on that end of the floor. Neither one of these guys really getting involved in the offensive action. Going to keep it on this end with 9.03 to go in a very fast moving game because neither side turns it over very much and they don't foul very much. 51-43, the Hokies. Vanderplas will step out. And Gardner back on now for Tony Bennett, whose team, again, has never led in this game. Hokies used to playing very close games. They've lost too many of them. They're just three and eight in conference play. Here's Padula, and he'll draw the foul. And just a miscommunication defensively for Virginia. Once again, forgetting about the guy with the basketball who happens to be the most dangerous man on the floor at the time, Sean Padula getting a clean run to the basket, forcing Reese Beekman to foul him. Number two on Beekman. Padula, one of the better foul shooters in the ACC, 86%, but a miss on the first one. Padula and Mutz have been the big story for the Hokies. They, they absolutely have been. And you consider all the guys coming into this game that we talked about who needed to step up. Well, Sean Padula was number one for Virginia Tech, and he's done that throughout this game. But the Hokies going to need production from Hunter Couture and Grant Mazzilli to continue to keep this lead and be successful coming down the stretch. A ways to go yet, but for the Hokies, it's one thing to beat a team that's won seven in a row. It's one to beat a team as good as Virginia. It's another to beat Virginia. It's absolute, especially when you think about Virginia right at the top of the ACC, Reese Beekman attacking the basket, going off the rim. But this Virginia team isn't scary defensively. They're, they put fear in you with their offense. 
And right now, Virginia Tech on their home floor, very comfortable on the offensive end of the floor. Beekman with nine. Knocked away by Gardner. One of the problems for the Hokies has been their inability to finish in so many of these close defeats Second down the stretch. The yeah, they let one go in Miami on Tuesday night. A game where they battle back and forth with a very good Miami team, but allowed 92 points to the Hurricanes. That is unheard of for Mike Young. And you look at all the close losses that the Hokies have endured this season. Many coaches will tell you, you see the record at 3-8 and eight in ACC. They could very easily be 8-3. and three. Couture way down top. Oh. Up around the logo. Oh. And that is a 10-point lead. And Hunter Couture starting to get involved in the offensive end of the floor. Off balance, tough shot there by Clark. He'll draw the foul. Couture started out 0 for 6 from three-point land, but he's hit his last couple. I asked Hunter pregame, are you ready for this? And he looked at me and said, you know, I'm the last person you need to ask if I'm ready. This could be the last time he plays against Virginia on this floor. The Hokies have won two in a row. Hunter Couture going logo range, trying to get win number three. Clark, 77% swishing in the first one. Much to the chagrin of many of the fans in the student section because the rule is you've got to miss two as the opposing team in the second half and then everybody gets bacon. Eight minutes to go, 55-47. Mazzilli wants to attack again and blocked out of the sky. Dunn came over to cover and got his hand on it. So a big defensive stop for the Cavs. Here's Beekman. Beekman going one on one with Couture, gives it up. Clark, here it comes. Got it! A triple. Nice find from Reese Beekman. And with Beekman going one on one at the top of the key, all defensive eyes are on him. K.A. Clark does a great job moving without the basketball, finding the open spot to knock down a huge three. He's so steady. 14 points for him. Couture wants to go on the baseline. Here's Padula. <laughs> Beekman tearing down the board. Here come the Cavaliers again. Beekman, Padula went down, and he was tripped on the play. The offensive player, the foul will be on Padula. That'll be three on him. 6.59 to go. Oh, look, we can be dynamic with an analysis or a breakdown, but the reality is at home, this Iowa State team is electric. They're tough, and Kansas has not had an answer. No doubt about it. OB, CA, back to you. Now, Dal, we take a look at Joey Brackett's in the Big 12. He's got Kansas as a one, Texas a two, K State a three, Iowa State, TCU, Baylor all fours. Obi, you know I am ride or die with my conference. I'm ACC through and through. The Big 12 may be the best basketball conference in the country this season. You slid that in a maybe. Maybe. I can't. I, I'm not going to go all in on it, but they may be the best conference this season. Just brutal. Up and down, man. Trying to get a win in that conference. Kihei Clark gave up the dribble. Beekman with a quick step, leaning in, and it rolls home. Such a different player when he's aggressive. Reese Beekman just made up his mind, I'm going to the basket, and there's nothing you can do about it. When he plays like that, it takes this Virginia team to a different dimension. 7-0 run for the Cavaliers to pull it in three. Mutz working on a 17-point game. They want Bazzilli in close and a reverse. He cashes in. Great execution once again from the Hokies, knowing exactly where they want to go. One of the things that Mike Young has done differently, they're not going to the dribble handoff as much as you normally see with the Hokies, using that just to set up other action. Pop back out for Dunn. Under six minutes to play in Blacksburg. Short by Clark. And a whistle. 
5.53 to go. And that foul will go on Gardner of the Cavaliers, number three. Reese Beekman just deciding, I can take MJ Collins. I can go wherever I want to go and is able to do that and finish off the bucket. And then the execution to get Basili the basketball. Kihei Clark coming over to try to help, but not enough to be able to get Basili a great look on the interior. So that'll put Couture at the line on the other end. Armand Franklin checking back in for Tony Bennett. 57 to 52. How unusual it's been this season for Virginia to look up so late in the game knowing they have yet to have a lead. And short on that one. Yeah, you don't see that often. Virginia is normally a team that plays with a lead but have the ability to be able to come back. They've got the three point shoot and we mentioned 38 and a half percent from beyond three point art leads the ACC a very good shooting three point team. And they had that in their pocket to be able to use it if necessary. Whistle off the ball. The 540 showing. And so Virginia to check it in the baseline MJ Collins picks up number two for the Hokies. Clark on Couture, a determined drive, but blocked by Bazzilli. And Bazzilli's done a great job defending the rim throughout this game. The Hokies have numbers. Swings that one for Mutz, draws the double. Clark pokes it away. It'll be Hokies basketball. The great hustle by Kia Clark getting back to take that away, but as Clark attacks the basket, Grant Bazzilli. Just standing his ground, making it difficult for Kihei to finish over the taller players. Bazzilli now with his third block shot on the game. As you say, he's been stout defensively. He gets the ball, working on a shorter Clark. Couture open. Yes, sir! He is that open. It's almost like a layup. But Virginia switching defensively. Gardner on Bazzilli. No sir, but a foul. No basket there. The foul came before that shot. Hey, looking ahead to our next games for Virginia and Virginia Tech. They're both over on ACC Network. On Tuesday night at 9 o'clock Eastern, the Cavaliers hosting NC State at John Paul Jones Arena, where Virginia is 10 and 1. And then on Wednesday, Hokies welcome Boston College here to Blacksburg at 7. Gardner with a miss on the first one. He's only 63% at that line. Is there bacon on the way in Blacksburg? Yes, sir. Man, was that dramatic. 60 to 52. Taken away by Gardner and a slam. And Jaden Gardner makes up for the two missed free throws with the steal and the finish, making a six point game. And that's one of the swings. If you're Mike Young, you hate to see that with momentum, everything in your favor, opportunity to put points on the board to give up the pick six turnover. Gardner with a solid one, 16 points. Approaching the four minute mark, it's Bazzilli. Throw it out almost to midcourt. Kendra with a drive and knocked away. It is going to go the other way. It was not touched, according to Ted Valentine. And it's going to be Virginia ball. Hokies thought for sure it had been tipped. Take a look. Well, one thing's for certain when you attack the basket and it's not an aggressive attack, attack of the basket, Gardner does get a hand on that basketball, though. The Hokie faithful have a right to be upset with that call. You see Jaden Gardner tipping it out of bounds. Cavaliers, can they make hay with that call? Bigman. Bigman will drive and pop. Short. Six 
So the Hokies by half a dozen. Virginia now with a smaller lineup. Armand Franklin having to guard Justin Mutz. Mike Young's going to get Padula back in. And that one good for Bazzilli. 37% out there. He can hit that shot. And a timeout. Having a stretch five on the floor is always dangerous. Grant Fazilli taking advantage of the attention paid to Hunter Couture, knocking down a huge three. Arby's new Steakhouse Garlic Ribeye Sandwich. We're on the road to Tennessee, Santiago Vescovi trying to bounce back at that loss to Florida. Well, as good as Tennessee is, it's so many things. I still think they go as he goes. As Vescovi plays, he did not play great at Florida the other night. He's a key because he can score and he moves the ball so well. Coming up here on ESPN2 in just a few minutes, more ACC hoops. Florida State on the road at Louisville, who got their first ACC win last game against Georgia Tech, looking to make it two in a row, L. Ellis and crew. OB, CA, back to you. Down, thanks you very much. 63 to 54, Virginia Tech. Virginia with the ball, however, boy, the Tennessee team, best defensive team I've seen all year. Yeah, Tennessee plays defense like you're used to seeing Virginia play and Virginia playing offense like you haven't seen since 2019 when they won a national championship with Isaac Neely coming off knocking down a three at a crucial point. So every time it looks like the Hokies going to break away Virginia finds a way to stay attached. They absolutely do and that three point shooting keeps them in games. They're dangerous from beyond the arc. Great call from Tony Bennett coming out of the timeout to give McNeely a look. Kator is really heated up right from that spot, but not this time. It's kept alive. Bazzilli had a hand on it. Back up top for Padula. He'll set it up under two and a half. And once again, the small lineup on the floor for Virginia. Armand Franklin as the fourth guard. Padula can't get off a shot now, forces one. Mutz caught it underneath. Back to the Cavaliers, 63 57. Beekman going for the dunk and draws the foul. He'll be to the line to shoot a pair. And our college basketball lineup rolling on all afternoon on ESPN at 4 o'clock. Number one for Dew in Bloomington. Taking on number 21, Indiana. That'll be great theater. Nothing beats North Carolina Duke as they square off at Cameron Indoor with Dan Schumann, Jay Billis, and Holly Roll. On the call, it's tonight at 6.30. Timeout, 2.09 to play. Still a close one at Blacksburg. In two seconds. Brian, Corey Alexander, Angel Gray with you. And down the stretch we come, partner. Absolutely. And if you're Virginia right now, opportunity to put points on the board at the free throw line. Reese Beekman with two shots on the attack. And again, you, you stay solid right now for, for Virginia. You have to get stops. That's going to be the important part to be able to get stops on the other end of the floor. And Mike Young has told his team exactly what he wants them to do coming out the huddle offensively. Most likely you will see Justin Mutz getting the basketball on the block, forcing Virginia to have to trap and open something up. Before the break, Bazzilli with the foul. Beekman excellent at the line, 84%. And makes the pair. And this is where it's such a benefit to have a guy like Justin Mutz who you can give him the basketball and allow him to initiate the offense. Take pressure off of Sean Badula to have to deal with Kihei Clark. Mutz, the guy who just sees the floor so well. On the attack, Collins will land. And Jay Collins! And Jay Collins, the freshman who's been working his way into that starting lineup. With a big shot, Beekman trying to return the favor, and he does. It's amazing the difference of Reek Beekman, Beekman as MJ Collins took a shot. And now coming off the floor, they hand him a towel. Looks to be bleeding there from the lip. Was this just an accidental elbow? He took the brunt of it here. Take a look. Yeah, nothing worse, though, than when your own teammate gets you and you see Justin Mutz trying to fight through the screen and accidentally elbows his own teammate. MJ Collins is the cleanup crew is going to have to get on the floor.
Tony Bennett actually tried to check on MJ Collins as he was walking off the floor. The nose here. And Tony Bennett checking on MJ Collins walking off the floor, recognizing the blood, kind of stepped back after he saw it. Yeah, recoiled a bit. Yeah. Like, okay, that's <laughs> somebody else's bit. job. Make sure he's okay. But I'm not sure anyone yet has recognized that there needs to be cleanup on the floor. As you see Mutz coming through that right elbow, he con making contact with his teammate, catching Collins. And still bleeding from the nose. The freshman from Clover, South Carolina. It's been a nice developing story for Mike Young at this point in the season. And then here's the issue. Collins has been an important part of the mix. He made the game winner against Duke on this floor to get another look. And that's a tough shot to take. And right now, the cleanup on the floor is my guy Ethan Saliba, the head athletic trainer for the University of Virginia, is now on the job cleaning up here for Virginia Tech. But this, the time that is taking is giving Virginia Tech a little more time to try to get MJ Collins back into the game. Yeah, it does stop the bleeding though. And right now, Camden coming back on the floor. And John Camden with a very good game against Syracuse has not played the minutes that MJ Collins has. Doesn't have the same experience. And you remember Virginia Tech playing without Darius Maddox in this game. Now Camden, the 6'8 freshman. He's a guy who can shoot the long bomb, too. 65-61. 90 seconds to play. Virginia Tech with the basketball. Here's Mutz high. Directing traffic with 10 to shoot. Hands off for Couture. Mutz, oh, look at the feed here for Bazzilli. Oh, and with 150. To go, Bazzilli getting it done underneath. That's why you want the basketball in the hands of Justin Mutz at this time. It's going to force Virginia to half to double team. Mutz perfectly navigates the double team, finding Grant Bazzilli with the nice cut, the finish, and the Hokies playing well. Do you think you have what it takes to make like it never even happened? Ha well, nothing new in this series all time between the Hokies and the Cavaliers. Another close one, 67 to 61, Virginia Tech. To give you a look at the reset here. Each side with one timeout remaining. Hokies have the possession arrow. And Virginia with the basketball right now on the last after timeout. We saw Tony Bennett go to action that tore that brought Isaac McNeely off of the stagger screen, allowing him to get up a three. We'll probably see similar action, but it'd be more of a decoy to get someone else a look than it would be for McNeely. He had Clark to bring it across. Approaching one minute to go. McNeely. Beekman spinning to the paint. Guard with a rebound and finishes his own miss. Two point basket is built by one. But important time here, and if Camden is the guy you want to foul, he hasn't been in this situation as often. Couture had it knocked away, but a whistle, two, and a foul. Ball came free, but there was a foul on the play. That's his fourth personal foul. Tenth team foul against the Cavaliers. And so it'll be Couture to the line. Reese Beekman going to the basket, unable to finish, but Armand Franklin, two offensive rebounds. Couture shooting two. There have been 49 games in this series all time, decided by five points or less. Forgive me, Jake, Jake Gardner with the offensive rebound to put back on that last possession. And Couture with number two. 74% at the line. A lot of iron, but it falls away. 
And right now, you don't need a three. Virginia can go quickly. Beekman may have got away with a walk there. Clark can't hit. Couture out hustling everybody for the rebound. Padula is the best foul shooter on the floor. Mutz, Bazzilli, lays it in. Seventy to sixty-three, Virginia Tech. Clark gets up a long one, and that'll rattle in a three-pointer and a timeout, Virginia. And a four-point game with 22 seconds to go. 22 seconds of eternity in a basketball game. Only four points. Still a lot of time remaining. And right now, if you're Virginia, you want to set up your full-court pressure. See if you can get the turnover first. You don't want to foul early without taking the opportunity to get the turnover. And Virginia Tech handled the pressure perfectly on the last possession. And attacking, and then Kihei Clark knocking down the three ball to make it a four-point game and right now if you're tony bennett you want to send your pressure after guys if you can foul anyone let it be john Camden. let it be justin mutz one of the guys who aren't there better free throw shooters send them to the line and again Camden hasn't been in this position off so therefore let him be the guy that has to go to the free throw line to try to make this a multiple possession game uh, as you mentioned mutz does a lot of things well. Not a great foul shooter. He's just 63%. But on the other side, of course, Mike Young will make sure that he designs something to kind of keep both those guys out of the mix as much as he possibly can. Wants to get the ball to number three, Sean Padula, any way he can. He makes 86%, one of the best foul shooters in the Atlantic Coast Conference. And most likely, Padula will get the inbounds pass. Virginia will trap him, force him to give it up. You've got enough time to continue to extend the game. You don't have to foul him immediately. But whoever catches it afterwards, you've got to have a, a foul there if you don't get the turnover. And for Virginia, a seven-game winning streak on the line. And number six in the poll. Virginia Tech fighting their way back off a seven game losing skid won a couple lost their last one now trying to knock off their rivals here in Blacksburg. So it'll be months to put it in. And right to Padula Clark will foul him immediately. Less than a second went off. But Double Padula, zero, the best foul Clark shooter Clark. on the floor for either team. And you don't mind that strategy either because you save time. You continue to extend the game by doing so. The problem is you put Virginia Tech's best free throw shooter on the line and a guy who's been in this situation many times before. He's had a really good day. First meeting in Charlottesville, they held him to 10 points. They really locked him up, but he's been huge today. I thought that was a game that Kia Clark took personal. Steph Curry, of course, and Ty Jerome in the building. And I think Sean Padula took this one personally today to get a little bit of retribution. 20 for Padula in this one. Clark off to Beekman and a three. Gardner went for the tip. And a big battle there and another whistle with 12 seconds to go. And a foul here against the Hokies will put Gardner at the line. Gardner makes just 63%. Been a big time scorer in his career over 2,000 career points. And Sean Padula encouraging the Castle Guard to make as much noise as possible to keep Jake Gardner from making this a four point game. Calmly sinking the first one, shooting into the teeth. Of the student section. He makes the pair. 72 68. It's Padula again. And a reach and a foul by Franklin with 11 seconds left. So the Hokies trying to salt this one away at the line. And again, Virginia has never had a lead today and it tied several times. The great execution by, you know, the Hokies to be able to get the basketball in Padula's hands. Knowing that Virginia is going to pressure him and getting him to be the guy that goes to the free throw line to try to salt this game away. Now the Hokies at the line. 
And they are 12 of 18. They were only at the line a couple of times in the first meeting, and Mike Young said before the game, that's going to be huge to get the foul line today. They've been able to do it. Yeah, perfect. Two for two in the first meeting between these two. Beekman to the paint and the kick out. Long one coming. Won't drop. Gardner back up. And that's it. And the Hokies win it. By a final score of 74 to 68, Virginia's seven game winning streak is history. Virginia Tech needed this win, and they got it. A quad one win to keep their NCAA tournament chances alive.